and welcome back to Hand Collectibles for another review and assembly guide of the Fast and Furious Skyline. Brian Skyline from Too Fast, Too Furious. And here we have issues 39 all the way through to 44. So six issues again, as you can see, uh, some major parts of the rear of the car, uh, the remote for all the lights and sounds, and uh, the exhaust system and some other bits. So uh, let's delve in and take a closer look at each book. Okay, so here we have uh, issue number 39 and the parts that come with it. As you can see, it's the rear differential by the looks of it, the axle. And uh, we'll just move that to one side. We'll have a quick look through the book and see what's inside, what information you get this time. As you can see, a bit about the R33, predecessor to the R34. Look at Dom's car. More about Nismo. You see the famous tuning company, Fast and Furious. And there we have it, the issue 39, rear differential, the assembly guide, and then what it should look like at the end. Okay, let's move on and assemble this. Okay, so here we have issue 39's assembly parts, as you can see, predominantly the rear axle. Okay, so let's start assembling this. That's the first part we need is this bit. And then I think we can just okay, it's need to attach these. So one in here, one in the opposite end as well. And then put the, the top on. Let's get the screwdriver. And we'll need some AP screws. Let's just get some AP screws out. Then we're just gonna put one in here. There'll be two screws that go in the top by the looks of it. Don't over tighten these too much, as I say, because this is a plastic piece. Top and bottom, so if you tighten it too much, I'll just strip the thread out and then the two pieces will become loose and they won't go together. My mistake is I don't go in that one, it goes in the hole. That's definitely a bit silly. Put it in the wrong hole, it goes in the ones that have got a recess. So that's been right for trying to look at the instruction manual and put it together at the same time. Okay, so let's tighten up as it is. As you can see, these are in each end and they do just spin. Okay, so what is the next step? Okay, so the next step is, is to put the rear part of the box on. As you can see it only goes one way. It's just a push fit. Once you've got it lined up, you can just push them in. You get it lined up though before you just push them in. There we go. There's the back part, all nice and fitted. Okay, I think for the next step, we have to bring the rear subframe back in. Okay, so here's the rear subframe back in. And then if we just bring this in, turn it up this way, then these two just go on top of that one. And then there is a hole on the underneath, which then lines up here. With this one is the first one you put in, so you put an AP screw in that one. It's not too tight. You can see you put the AP screw in there and it'll just hold it 
in place so then you can input two screws one here and one here either side and they are AM screws and we'll move on to the other screws that we get So you have to go too tight, just tight enough so it doesn't move about. Put the one in the other side as well. Okay, so it don't move about at all. That's kind of how it should be. There we go. There it looks. Okay, well, what is the next step? Okay, for the next step, you want all these four bits. Then just want to insert these into here to the bottom. At an angle, as you can see, then one end fits directly over there. You push them in tight, and then the other head end just going to have to just. And just get them in as best you can and they just fit in there as well like so okay, it kind of looks like it's a sort of diagonal pass to the wheel hub you do the one on the opposite side as well just push that in there like that In there as well. And then roll it back and then in. There we go. I think that's why they then it's just a little bit of play in these just so when you're moving all this doesn't pull these out okay as you can see that's how it looks really detailed piece and then there's one more part which is I presume it's a, like a steering rack some kind of steering rack and uh, that's just put to one side for the next issue okay let's move on to the next one and here we have issue 40, an assembly part, or just assembly parts, I think, with this one, because it's the main rear of the car. You can see, dark car, so really heavy, and uh, it's going to obviously be part of the main structure of the car. So let's move this to one side and we'll have a quick look at what information is inside the booklet. More about the famous car. More about the Fast and Furious characters. Here we'll drive racing. In this most story, as you can see, rear chassis section. Now this bolts to the main section, and what it should look like at the end. So the car is really starting to take shape now. Okay, let's assemble this. Okay, as you can see, I've just slid it together. So the floor slides under this part here to line up these screw holes here, these screw holes here, but this part goes on top 
and lines up these two screw holes here and here. So it's quite, got to give it a bit of force to push it together, but once, once it goes together, I think it's just because of the excess bit of paint is uh, why it's a little hard to push it together. You can do these up quite tight. So obviously it's a metal thread, so you won't strip it out. is then to put the one two here and one two here so two on each side so four em screws in total to hold the middle section together when i do it i always like to just one on each side just to make sure they're all lined up. You'll feel it go tight. Here's the next one. As you can see, it's all put together nice and easy. If I turn it over as well, and have a look at the underneath. And that's it, that's the main part of the chassis now put together. And here we have issue 41. As you can see, with its assembly parts. So just some, I think, rear suspension in this one that we need to put together. Just move into one side and we'll take a closer look once we assemble it. Let's have a look through the book like we normally do. 40th anniversary version of the Skyline. A bit more about Letty's story in the Fast and Furious franchise. A bit more about rallying. and rear suspension assembly guide and then what it should look like when it's all put together okay so here we have issue 41's assembly parts as you can see most of it is rear suspension for the rear subframe as you can see we have some ajm screws some xm screws and some aem screws so quite a few bits to screw together, quite a few delicate small parts, obviously the shock absorbers and springs. Uh, they were quite difficult to put together on the front because you've got to compress them while turning the tops into the, the mounting points. So obviously it drops down into there and then you have to turn them while compressing the screw. So, you know, fairly difficult to do on the front, so I imagine the rear is going to be the same. Okay, let's start putting this together. Okay, so the first step is, is to put, obviously, this part here. And as you can see, there's an L on here. All right, so this is the left-sided one, which is the one you want first. And then your right-sided one, obviously, is the one after. It doesn't really matter with these parts because they're the same, all four of them. And then you need some 
AJM screws, two of them as well. Okay, so we'll start just put these together. So as you can see, these just mount on there. So you get AJM screw, just screw it into through that hole there. side as well. Screwdriver. And now just hold it with your thumb. And then just start to screw them in. I'm not sure yet how tight to go with these. I'll just go tight enough so they're not moving about too much. Well, I think you can only go so tight and they still do move about, so it solves that issue. They're like that and that. That's what they should look like. And if we bring the rear subframe back in, so you want the left side of the subframe again, as you can see. So you want this little spindle here, which has got like a hole in it, which then this mounts directly here so you may need to just line the hole up before you screw this together yeah, and then we need a AEM screw to go right through it got it lined up it will go in quite easy if you find yourself with a bit of resistance you may just need to move the mat out just until it lines up but you'll, you'll feel it pass straight through straight through to the other side there we go maybe the, the way it goes on Make sure. Why not that? I'm not sure if it goes the upper way actually. Because the mounts, I think. The left hand side. Can I take it away? Mm, no, not really. It's the same. Let me just double check for the instructions. Okay, so it says the L on the underneath here should face towards the exterior. So that way around, so on the inside. So I made it right. Always best to double check these things. Because obviously you don't want to be taking this back apart once everything's put together. Definitely not. There we go. Okay. So that's that one done. And I think that's the next step. Okay, so the next step is the top part of the shock absorber. And we want a XM screw as well. These have got like a little left and right on them as well. So there'll be a L for the left here, left hand side. And if you look on here, there's an L on this one as well. You just wanna make sure you're all the same. And then this little tab should be pointing up and this little tab should be pointing up as well. And then you just put the screw in the side. You may just wanna 
roll it through a little bit before you get to there. I want to hold it in place and do the screw up as well. side and then that's how that sits okay so that's that part and the next part is to bring in a screw oh sorry a spring and then your left hand side shock absorber as well okay so this drops onto here this then into here as well and then you've got to compress this there it is. just realize what I've done wrong so when you're screwing this in just be really careful there is a recess on one side for the screw head to go into so just be really careful when you're doing that Otherwise, the top of the shock absorber will not fit in at all because the screw head will stick out the other side. Okay, then you've got to push this together. As you push it together, you've got to twist and then unlock it. So it goes down, twist over, and then pops back up. As you can see, my one's in and it's locked. So that's what your shock absorber will look like. Okay, for the next step, it's attaching the shock absorber now to the rear subframe. As you can see, this little mounting point on the underneath is where the shock absorber attaches. When you do it, you just want to attach it. Like that. It's quite tight. There we go. I'm going to get the hole lined up. And the screw goes in. And if you've got your hole lined up, like I say, they go go in quite easy, these ones. go shock absorber mounted very cool so I think maybe the next step is now is just to reproduce that again on the opposite side so I'll just put that to one side Okay, so all the bits we need again, just like last time. Screw that in, there we go. And other side as well. Obviously everything this time we've marked up with the letter R for your right side of your suspension. And even on the bottom of your subframe, you'll see there's like an L for left here and an R for right side here. And like last time, so you want the little R that's on this mounting point, you want that on the inside. You want a 
Hi, James. Hi, Like I said, with this screw, it just passes all the way through. There we go. So that's that thing, that side in. Lovely. Yeah, like last time, just put it to one side for a moment. And bring these in. And then XM screw. Like I said, when you want both of these little dowels facing upwards, a recessed hole, the XM screw. Through to the other side, do that nice and tight. There we go. The top just moves about nice and easy. And we're going to bring this screw, sorry, the spring, set it again. Insert that now, and then it's the same as last time. So you want to push it down, twist it over so it pops back up in this little ridge here. Okay. There we go. That one's in. Pretty cool. And obviously right side spring. I want the AEM screw. Screw this in. Pushing the screw into the hole. Like I said, if it's all lined up, it'll just go in nice and easy. There's no resistance to pushing the screw in until you get to the end of it. Okay, and there we go. There's both springs on the rear subframe. Okay, let's move on to the next issue. So here we have issue 42 and assembly parts. As you can see, most of this is a rear stabilisation for the rear suspension by the looks of it. So if we move that to one side, I'm going to have a look through the book. Hmm, the original Nismo 400R, not a motor. There's some really classy pictures in some of these books. more about Fast and Furious characters. Yeah, rear chassis stabilizers. And there you go, what it'll look like when it's done. Okay, so here we have issue 44. Two's assembly parts. As you can see, it's rear stabilizers for the rear subframe, and there's a lot of screws on this one. There's some BP screws, some AM screws, some AP screws, some CM screws, some GM screws, some AIM screws, and some MP screws. So there's going to be a lot of bits to put together and screw together for this to go onto the rear subframe. So 
All right, let's crack on. Okay, so here are the parts that we need for the next stage. As you can see, we put the rear subframe pack in. We've got two AM screws and then this part here. So I think what we have to do is spin this over. Let's push the springs down. And then to leave this part just goes here and here. It does. Let me just double check that. Yep, that's exactly right where it goes. And let's uh, screw this into place. Get a small screwdriver, might make this a bit easier. Pushing the screw in, lining it up on the hole, and then screw it out. Probably the easiest way to do it. There we go. So there's that part there, and as you can see, it follows like the contour of the sofa. Okay, so what's the next part we need? Okay, so we've got. 42D and 42C, 42D I believe is the right side with the R on it, 42C is the left side with the L on it, on the underneath. Okay, so these ones, they just, okay, this one goes here. I think there's a little notch there just to stop them going any further. So you put them on there and then screw it in, okay. Let's try that. Double check just to make sure I've got this right. All oh, right, hang on. So the, the little dowel goes in the hole, and then the screw then lines up with the with the hole at the rear. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Like that. Okay, so that's how that sits. Okay, let's move on to the next stage. Okay, so for the next step, we need these two little bits here some MP screws, two MP screws, and this bar here. So, take the larger one, which is this piece here, and that attaches to that, and the screw goes in. Okay. 
goes just like that. And then this little one, kind of the same as with this hole here. This as well. Just line it up where the hole is. Okay. We'll turn this. I'll just unscrew the screw a little bit because I'm just looking. I think they have to face outwards, both of them. Okay, so we'll do that one now, and then we'll screw that one up there. So both these little nodules are just facing outwards. Okay. Okay, so the next step should be nice and easy. All we're going to do is these two parts we just put on a minute ago, we're just going to push these in the holes. You feel them once they're lined up, then just squeeze them together. And this one again, same, just like that. So that's kind of how that sits. Okay, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so here we are in the next step. So you want to bring this part back in from the previous uh, issue. And you obviously want these two parts as well. One of them's marked up as a right-sided, and one of them's marked up as a left-sided part. And then you just push these together. And then you'll put your screw directly through it. There we go, right through to the other side, and then we do this one as well. this one in there we go Got a bit tight on this side I think as well there we go so that's kind of what that should look like and then these little bits of paint that come off And then, when we put something back in, there's these two little holes here and here. And that is what I believe this part and this part should attach to. Okay, not sure if they go. It goes, it goes through there, I think, like that. Right, let me just double check to make sure all that's correct. So yeah, that is correct. So to turn to this end, it just runs then directly under this bar into this side. And then you've got some AIM screws either side and then two CM screws here and here to put them in. So we'll just start putting these in first. Do these ones up nice and tight because there shouldn't be any movement in these ones. 
and you see them screws two little holes here and here and that's where your CM screws should go you get to really start to see how detailed the subframe is on this now it is extremely detailed with a lot of moving parts. There we go. No wiggle room in that. That's all where that sits. Really nice piece. Okay, so what is next? Okay, for the next step, we're going to drop the drive shaft in. As you can see, drive shaft just drops into the hole. You don't push right in, it just sits in like that. And then I think we've got to bring the rear subframe back in. Okay, let's go get it. This in, as you can see. You've got these and you've got these two little nodules here. Gonna fit right in here and here. Let's just bring this in and try and man it. Yep. Okay, that part and that part in. Good. Okay, because that part was so hard to do, I just had to do it off camera. So, just to show you what you've got to do, you've got to slot the springs into the hole locators underneath there. And then this little bar here that goes around and then comes underneath here will be two little mounting brackets. So, you have to put a screw into that to screw it to there. Then get your screwdriver right down here and then screw that one into there. I would say screw these ones in first because these ones are easier to get to because these are quite quite difficult to see to get the mounting bracket on the hole to line it up and then to drop the screw down this hole and then to put them in so yeah it's quite difficult to do but yeah that's how it looks once it's all on as you can see pretty intricate you know loads of detail really a nice piece uh, and i think all we've got left to do is to Slot this in and it goes into the back of the engine as well. There we go. So slots down now and then drops into the back of the engine as well. Yeah. And it spins as well, which is you know cool. Okay, let's move on to the next stage. Okay, so I'll take it all back. There were some screws still left to do on the other side. So you have to flip it over. Obviously, this is the top side of the interior of the car. And as you can see, this is where your, you know, your uh, springs, struts are mounted, located. So you've got to put a CM screw in each one of these. There we go, nice and tight. And we want a, a two APs and two BPs. So we'll do the BP screws first. see where they're located. Okay, so the BP screws are inside here. Which I presume is going to be the speaker box. And the 
Thank you, guys. I'm going to go don't do it up overly tight because I think you're going into a plastic part on the underneath. screws then I think your AP screws are going in these two holes here and here have a look okay so you just had to make sure that the underside was right against it because the pipe that it holds up these two screws wasn't right up against the holes Insert two BP screws, one here and one here. Make sure the part that you're screwing in is right up against the hole, otherwise, the screw will just spin and fall out. There we go. And the next stage is, is we want the CM screws. So we've got two CM screws in this side here and here, and then two here and here. And then that will complete this issue. Just take that, turn it around, and you can see then how it all sits. So just to make sure you get all these right up close against the other side that you're screwing in, and all these parts as well. As you can see, it's all screwed in, all the suspension, it's all in there, and that completes this issue. Here we have issue 43, as you can see with this issue assembly parts of the rear exhaust system and what that will look like when that's all in the underneath of the car very cool look to the other side where they look through the booklet a bit more about the 400R the same as what we had in the last booklet really cool looking motor in red you don't see a lot of skylines in red About who's the fastest between Dom and Brian? Yeah, 43 the exhaust system. You know, it'll look like when it's all fully installed. 
Okay, so here we have issue 43 is assembly parts. As you can see, it's all about the exhaust system. So quite a lot of bits to put together. Uh, not so many screws. So we've got some BP screws and some AP screws, but obviously this will complete the exhaust system. So, okay, let's uh, start assembling this. Okay, so here's the first step. So obviously we've got the exhaust system. And then we've got this part here, which is obviously the rear exhaust part. I believe. So that way? Ah, oh, yes, that way. So I'm hoping that that's the right angle. Yep, because that's the bottom, that's the top, so that's the angle you want. So you want it just angling up because it sits under the car, it's going to be like that. Okay, let's just take our AP screw and then just insert it. Okay, that completes that part. Okay, the next step is uh, these two parts. So we're just going to these two parts together so as you can see AP screw here and here nothing too hard AP screw the exhaust parts together there we go the other AP screw Insert that as well, like so. There we go. Once we've got that, that inserts onto that part. And then we're just going to insert this part directly on top. So obviously this is the extremely big exhaust system. Okay, and then some more AP screws for this as well. And insert them right down there. Right down the hole. They say they need to go too tight with these, otherwise you will just strip the thread out on them. You don't want to do that. Yep. As you can see, it's all that together. And we'll go to the uh, next part, which is this part here, we just want to connect that to that. And this is going to be a BP screw, a different screw. There we go. Move that to one side. The next stage is to bring these two parts in. I'm going to put these two together. And these two are with two AP screws. Oh, there goes one of them. Okay, so we want an AP screw here. And then another one here as well. Okay, that's that, that bit done. And then this part then 
touches here. And that's then with a BP screw again for that inside that part. There we go. And now we're going to attach the cover, which goes on like that. And then that's going to be connected with two AP screws. As you can see, that part slots right there, and then an AP screw goes through the centre here. There we go. Okay, and then the next step is this little bit here. One AP screw. together. And this part opens up. Oh. Leave this part just part of that there. Just like that, all just clips together. Then we want looks like two AP screws, one here, one here. Put the middle one in first. There we go. tight because it is just a plastic okay and then move this in because that's quite a long piece to deal with on there 
and then it's another A P screw through that part as well. Done. What is the next part? Okay, so now we want to fit this really long piece to the underneath of the car. Okay, so here's the underneath of the car. And then we're just gonna mount the exhaust pipe. And you see all the mounting points for it. turn it over and then just screw it on with AP screws. You might just have to just turn it to its side a little bit. Okay. Because there's quite a few. One here, and one just further down towards the gearbox as well. That one in. There are two up here where the back box sits. In, that part's in, yeah, and then that as well. There you can see the whole exhaust system. And I'll turn the car around the other way so you can see this end as well. So these tuck into here and you're screwing it in. There's a screw on the underside here for this part, there's a screw on the underside here for this part as well. As I turn it over, you'll see one there, one there. And that's it, it completes this issue. The exhaust pipe on. And here we have issue 44, the final issue in this package. Now, as you can see, quite something different with this one. We have the actual remote for obviously all the lights and sands, and there is a lot of lights and sands on this uh, this car, this model. It's one H scale model of the Too Fast Too Furious Skyline. So it'd be quite nice, you can get a remote with Dom's charger, because obviously there was limited amount of stuff that does work on it like it was just lights and sounds dash lights brake lights but uh, obviously this one has a lot more on it okay let's move that to one side and we'll have a look through the book about the, the miles 24 hour then a bit of history about a fast and furious character from one of the films And the remote control unit. And to put it all together. Very cool. Okay, so here we have issue 44's assembly parts. As you can see, this is now the remote control for all the lights and sands for the Nissan Skyline. So it doesn't look to be that hard to put this together. Not that many bits to it. See what one of these go around. So, want the keypad fits in here. 
the light goes up in this corner. Push it all in, like so. And then I believe this goes in here on top. It's like a little hole there that this fits through, like so. And then, looks like we just push this on top and it'll clip together. Like so. There we go, the remote control, put it together. And then I won't insert the battery yet. And then that goes in the underneath. And obviously it's easy, it just unclips, pulls out. And I believe this part is the motherboard for the inside the skyline. So just put this safe to one side until you're ready for that issue because I think the next issue is going to be a lot of wiring okay that completes this issue and this video thanks for watching please do like and subscribe to the YouTube channel it really does help and uh, I'll see you in the next video as always your collection your rules <laughs>